position. Pixel and concept. Now, the big thing that we're focusing in on here is if a lead gen is the first touch point in a multi-stage funnel, that's great. Lead, that's a conversion action. I always say that lead gen, the lead is actually more of an add to cart than it is a purchase. And the reason we have to think about it that way is, well, a lead isn't a customer yet. So that being said, what do we do with that information? Well, one, when I'm running conversion campaigns for leads, where my conversion objective is a lead event, not a purchase event, I can run my conversion campaigns just like I would any other direct-to-consumer store or e-commerce. Exact same everything. The problem is there's now touch points that occur afterward. So when we start talking about pixel information and qualification, especially in lead gen, just like you see in the world of view content and add to cart, a lower cost add to cart does not mean that somebody's more likely to buy. As a matter of fact, lower cost leads tend to be lower quality. That's a good general relationship. Now, it doesn't mean that you should only be focusing on the highest cost leads because there is absolutely a middle ground depending on the scale of your business. And we'll get to that in a bit too. So we're talking about the qualification. This is to say somebody started a lead. Great, that is a customer journey that has been started. And when we're doing marketing, we think of the funnel as a vertical event, which is totally true. But the customer journey is horizontal. And what I mean by that is your Facebook funnel ends with somebody taking a lead. At that point, then they're in an email flow. They're in some qualification for potentially a sales call or whatever else is going on. That lead now has its own customer journey after they've started, but that lead journey starts at the end of the sales funnel. So we have to think of the funnel ends at the beginning of the customer journey through our ecosystem, through our sales process. Now in that sales process, I will pixel every event that comes after that. And there are different ways of doing that. The easiest way or the simplest way is to say if somebody does sign up, pass an offline event to Facebook to say that's a purchase. Great, so now we're running a campaign where the objective is leads, but we can pull in another column that says purchases and see which of these leads ended up in a purchase. And when we start to do that, we're able to understand what type of concepts when running our dynamic creatives results in more effective purchases. And really what we're doing is now to say cost or better yet, efficiency of each one of those concepts. What type of concept isn't just driving the lowest cost lead because that doesn't necessarily matter. Which type of concept drives the most or the lowest cost sale? Because different concepts and different messaging are gonna bring in people of different value. Are you appealing to everyone or the person that's right ready to go? And there's no necessarily best option here and often, just like in e-commerce, it's a blend of choices. But the point is, especially when you're doing creative testing, when you're using dynamic creatives to build out post IDs to then use inside of your, your winners, and you're scaling that campaign, that one campaign that you're running for your account, if you can understand the cost per sale, which is an after lead event, you can begin to optimize for that, especially if you get more volume. Now, you might not be able to optimize the campaign towards that purchase event, but you're going to be able to optimize your decision making on understanding how effective is this concept versus another one. If you want to go even deeper, and I highly recommend that you do this, if you have other questions in that lead form that do allow you to qualify individuals, for instance, when you go to the Facebook Ads MBA program at submit.facebookdisruptor.com, I have a lead form there. Now, in that lead form, I have questions of what's your current daily spend? What are your current problems? Where are you trying to go? Are you ready to get started today? There are options. In general, people that convert tend to answer some of those questions in a similar fashion. 
And ultimately what I'm able to do is I'm able to qualify that lead as good, as, as, as a bad lead, a good lead, or a great lead. So then what I can do is pass that back to Facebook. So instead of it being lead and then purchase, I can have lead and then a qualification of a custom column inside of Facebook because I'm passing back an offline conversion event. This is a bad lead. This is a good lead. This is a great lead. So now I'm able to disqualify concepts. If they bring in a bunch of bad leads, I don't need to wait until I get those people to sign up to know whether that, that lead was good. Because over dozens and dozens, we're closing in on 100 students in the last year joining the Facebook Ads MBA program. I have a very good idea of how you've answered those lead forms to understand whether or not you're a good or bad lead. Now, it doesn't mean I'm going to not take the bad leads because, believe me, I get people from all over the world. I had somebody sign up last night that is working in an ad agency in Colombia that was spending, they, they were getting paid like what a normal U.S. media buyer makes in a week. They were making it a month. And they'd saved up in order to join. I also have other folks that are spending 20, 30, 50 million dollars a year. They're ready to, on the drop of a hat. But the point here is what I can do is begin to optimize my creative concepts in testing to lead to me to a place where I am more likely to drive good or great leads. And I can understand what concepts are getting the attention of individuals who I would otherwise classify as a bad lead. And you can do this inside of your business. I've done this in tons of businesses, from cars to coaching to real estate. I've done this in insurance. I've done this in will prep. I've done this and I mean, I could go on and on. The point is, this is how you can operate somebody using the lead business model, but still using conversion objectives. And ultimately, when you are qualifying individuals using pixel information to understand where they're coming from, you get the idea with your dynamic creatives, especially when you're starting to get the feedback of that lead form, how best to optimize your marketing efforts to deliver a desirable cost and scale. Because once you start optimizing towards specific types of people, because you know the concepts that are dragging in the highest quality individuals, then you can start to change your sales messaging and your onboarding experience and your call scripts, et cetera, to raise your conversion rate on those people. And so just like in an e-commerce store where you shouldn't be offering, you shouldn't be running ads to five different products, Run ads to one and improve the AOV, the LTV, and the conversion rate of that one thing because all of your data is going to one piece. In lead gen, we do the same thing. Don't try to be everything to everybody. Figure out what you can afford to spend on, what the best investment with that money is, and ultimately how you can improve the conversion rate and value of that traffic and of those leads by improving your creative because your ads are doing the targeting for you, right? In Facebook, ads do the targeting. Every ad makes its own lookalike audience. And every ad defines who that ad is going to appeal to. Again, these are inarguable points, and this is getting down to macroeconomics and the, of your unit economy of scale, what you're trying to do. And we'll get to a bit more of the cost and scale here in a minute. But the point here is understand what you're doing that is setting up the next stage of the business for success and lean into those things that drive a higher value, higher confidence, more scalable solution. And when you focus in on that, the net result is more revenue for less work. And that's really what it's all about. I know we just covered a lot there. If you have any questions about that stuff, please do not be afraid to comment below, reply back, DM me. I'd love to be able to help you out. If there's other people that you want to make sure that see this, feel free to tag them, share it with them, let them know. I'm also sending this type of stuff out every single week in the newsletter. You can sign up for free at newsletter.facebookdisruptor.com. It's the shape of disrupt to come. Every single week, we've got multiple articles and videos, interviews and blogs. So check that out.